Father, <coughs> Son, and the Holy Spirit, I welcome you all in this English morning worship service. <coughs> oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, and the sheep of His hand. Enter His gates with thanksgiving, and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him, bless His name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and His faithfulness to all generations. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on His name, make known His deeds among all the peoples. Sing to Him, sing praises to Him, tell of all His wonderful works. Glory in His holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you are the source of all life. Your eyes watch over us. You know the secrets of our hearts. Draw us into your presence. Move us into obedience and summon us to your holy feet that we may worship you with gratefulness and humility through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Now, let us raise and sing the hymn number 60. Hymn number 60. Jesus, the very thought of thee with sweetness fills my breast hymn number 60 
as we remain standing let us responsively read psalm chapter 111 psalms chapter 111 verses 1 onwards praise the lord i will give thanks to the lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation full of honor and majesty in his work and his righteousness endures forever he provides food for those who fear him he is ever mindful of his covenant the works of his hands are faithful and just all his precepts are trustworthy he sent redemption to his people he has commanded his covenant forever holy and awesome is his name let us all read together the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom all those who practice it have a good understanding his praise endures forever amen remain standing please turn page number 50 of csa book of common worship confession page number 50 if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves as the truth is not in us if we confess our sins he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness i will get up and go to my father and i will say to him father i have sinned against heaven and before you i am no longer worthy to be called your son the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of god has come near repent and believe in the good news if you do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are yet without sin let us kneel down and examine ourselves in silence Let us humbly confess our sins to the Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we should have done, and we have done those things which we should not have done and there is no health in us but you o lord have mercy upon us miserable offenders spare them o god who confess their faults restore them that are penitent according to your promises declare to human kind in christ jesus o lord and grant o most merciful god for his sake that we may hereafter live your godly righteous and just life to the glory of your holy name amen may the almighty and merciful lord grant us pardon and remission for all our sins time for amendment of life and the grace and comfort of the holy spirit amen please be seated today our chief guest is Professor Bala Singh
formerly vice principal and head of the head department of physics and research center scott christian college autonomous on behalf of the congregation the church committee and the pastors i welcome you in this morning in our english worship service now we will listen to a special song by home church senior and our then we we'll lis- listen to the ministry of the word of god after that our chief guest will deliver lord's message to us Today's Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis chapter 41 verses 37 to 43. Genesis chapter 41 verses 37 onwards. The proposal pleased Pharaoh and all his servants. Pharaoh said to his servants, "Can we find anyone else like this, one in whom is the spirit of God?" So Pharaoh said to Joseph, since god has shown you all this 
There is no one so discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall order themselves as you command. Only with regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Removing his signet ring from his hand, Pharaoh put it on Joseph's hand. He arrayed him in garments of fine linen, and he put a gold chain around his neck. He had him ride in the chariot of his second in command, and they cried out in front of him, Bow the knee. Thus he set him over all the land of Egypt. Here ends the reading, Price to be the God. Philippians chapter 3 verses 1 to 16. Philippians chapter 3 verses 1 onwards. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh, though I also might have confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisees. Concerning seal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me? These I have counted loss for Christ, but indeed I also count all things loss for the Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and counted them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness which is from the law, but the righteousness which is from God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being confirmed to his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the death, not that I have already attained or I am already perfected, but I am pressed on that I may lay hold for that for Christ which Christ Jesus has also laid hold for me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as matter have this mind, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us be of the same mind. Here ends the reading. Praise be to God. Today's Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, verses 16 to 22. Matthew chapter 19 verses 16 onwards. And behold, a man came up to him saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments, he said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and the mother. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these I have kept. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give to the poor 
and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me when the young man heard this he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions here ends the reading glory be to god let us all be seated all praise and glory to god who has given me this opportunity to share the lord's message with you i also take this opportunity to thank the revered pastor of our church the church committee and the enter congregation for giving me a chance to share the lord's message with you today's meditation is on spirituality of the youth in the contemporary world by contemporary world we mean the 21st century in which we live which is filled with chaos competition and hypertension we should also know that the word spirituality has been very often misunderstood and misrepresented if that is so what is the actual meaning or what is the real meaning of the word spirituality spirituality is the basic philosophy with which one lives and relates to others the basic philosophy with which one lives and relates to others is spirituality as christians we should know the spirituality not only like this but we should know it from the knowledge and understanding of our lord jesus christ his life and his works this was revealed by jesus himself at the synagogue in galilee this is revealed in luke chapter 4 verse 18 Luke chapter 4 verse 18 says that the spirit of the lord is upon me he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor freedom for prisoners eyes giving eyesight to the blind and thereby proclaim the year of god's favor or the jubilee year so a commission or a command has been given to lord almighty in this passage in luke 4 verse 18 and this represents that the prime goal of our lord jesus christ is threefold one is a creative object or a creative goal second one is a liberative goal or a liberative target the third one is witnessing for christ we shall see this one by one 
in the first of all the creative goal is not a personal one but directed towards the poor and the oppressed this may lead the youth to a state of spiritual emptiness or spiritual vacuum it was then that satan tries to enter in satan tries to fill the emptiness or the vacuum in youth by enticing them with all earthly attractions and leading them in short to a deserted and miserable life that is why jesus said in the, the gospel according to saint john chapter 16 verse 33 gospel according to saint john chapter 16 verse 33 says in order that you may have peace in me i have said this in the world you will have trials and tribulations but be of good cheer that i have overcome the world jesus who has overcome the world who has overcome all trials and tribulations very confidently advises the youth that you should be fearless you should be courageous that your god lord jesus christ has overcome all such difficulties in the world this in short means that bible is the clear answer to all human beings who are created in the image of the god this is what we read in genesis chapter 1 verse 27 genesis 127 says that god has created man in his own image in the image of god he has created him male and female he has created and breathed his spirit in them when the spirit of the lord is breathed is fed into the human beings naturally the holy spirit or the spirit of the god fills him in addition to that god says that through his son jesus christ that he has not only created man in his own image but at the same time he has given the spirit of his son jesus christ to reside in him the spirit of his son jesus christ is the holy spirit which god fills every human being in galatians 4:6 we read that in galatians 4:6 we read that in order that you may call me father the spirit of my son jesus christ is given to you so as such we as human beings we as christians we have the image of our lord jesus christ and we have in us the spirit of his son jesus christ so man with god's image and the spirit of his son should naturally come to jesus alone to inherit eternal life and spirituality in order that he may attain youth may attain spirituality right from younger days 
we should know that the heart or our mind should have an emptiness or vacuum to accept the spirit of the lord or the holy spirit now this is about the creative goal the creative goal creates in every youth sufficient space sufficient emptiness or sufficient vacuum so that through his son jesus christ god allows the holy spirit to fill the gap secondly we said the liberative goal the liberative target is very clearly revealed by the famous physicist and the famous philosopher louis pascal who propounded the pascal's law of flotation now pascal said that in the heart of every human being there resides a god sized vacuum and emptiness and emptiness or vacuum is created in every human being because of the creative target that was given to god that the spiritual vacuum is absolutely necessary to be filled in man to attain spirituality even at his youth now the scientist pascal is like the young man who comes to jesus and asks him a question we read in the gospel reading in matthew 16 that jesus said obey the commandments because the young man came and asked them what shall i do to inherit eternal life jesus said obey the commandments he doesn't stop with that because he was not the only person who came to jesus at that time he was followed by a group of sick people all of whom jesus healed again the group of sick people were followed by number of pharisees we find in the bible that jesus immediately reprimanded them for their craftiness and wickedness so the pharisees were scolded by lord jesus and finally fourthly a group of little children came to him and jesus blessed them so we find that jesus blesses the little children jesus reprimands the group of pharisees jesus heals the sick people but when the young person asks him what shall i do to inherit eternal life jesus says obey the commandments the 10 commandments that is given to you but the youth said i am following all this right from my younger days then jesus said still you lack one thing you sell all that you have and give it to the poor you sell all that you have and give it to the poor then there will be total emptiness in your heart and mind a vacuum will be created in you and in the vacuum god can send his son through his son jesus christ the holy spirit will enter inside so this is the second concept 
even if he is a rich man with all facilities jesus said you sell all that you have give it to the poor creating an emptiness or vacuum equivalent to god's own volume so that the holy spirit enters inside through his son jesus christ the finally the third anointing that jesus got was witnessing for christ right from youth witnessing for christ right from youth brings the needed spirituality in him usually many of the youth or many of the christians who read the bible they accept certain principles and reject most of the things that are written in that and this way of rejecting the words of the lord or rejecting the words of jesus christ only leads them to a deserted christian life but on the other hand there are a few people there are a few young people or youth who accept the teachings of christ who fully accept what lord god has said and this way of accepting god's teachings alone will lead them to a happy uh, christian life so two types of life are possible for us if we reject the teachings of jesus christ we are led to a deserted christian life but on the other hand if we accept the teachings of lord jesus christ we are led to a happy full life up to eternal life so jesus very clearly reveals that accepting spirituality right from the use involves a creative goal which creates in us a emptiness or vacuum which can be filled only by the god through his son jesus christ and that is holy spirit the second concept is liberative goal freedom from oppression when people with sickness came jesus healed them when little children came jesus blessed them all when pharisees came jesus knew that they are not good people he reprimanded them and he sent them away when the young man came jesus categorically said that you should obey the commandments but the youth felt that he is already uh, accepting all the commandments and he said i am following all these right from my boyhood but jesus said in that case we you sell all that you have and give it to the poor the man being said he went away in a very sad manner thus we find that spirituality of youth spirituality to reside in every human being right from his youth needs three things a creative role a liberative goal and finally witnessing for christ at every moment thanking god for all that he has done witnessing for christ comes when we accept god's teachings which alone will lead to abundant christian life eternal god bless us all and fill us all with the holy spirit 
so that all of us will be filled with the holy spirit until our eternal life may god bless us all let us all rise up and affirm our faith through the words of apostle creed page number 56 page number 56 i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ god's only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into the dead on the third day he rose again he ascended into heaven he is seated at the right hand of the father and he will come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen while we remain standing let us all sing the song must i go an empty handed hymn number 789 hymn number 789 from the book of sacred songs and solos
let us take page 82 on the CSA book of common worship. Page 82. Lord, we remember the millions in our world who must go hungry today. All those who do not even have the basic necessities of life and for whom life itself has become a burden. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Lord, we remember all those who, because of their caste, creed or class, color or sex, are exploited and marginalized. We recall the forces of oppression that trample on people and the unjust systems which breaks their spirit and rob them of their rights and dignity. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Lord, we bring before you the churches and the Christian congregations around the world. Often we have remained silent, passing by on the other side. Often we have been indifferent. Often we have been parts of the forces that destroy life. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Lord, we call to mind all authority that treats people as nobodies, military regimes and dictatorships, religious fundamentalists and extremists. We bring to mind lonely prisons and unjust laws, the war industry and political greed. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we affirm with hope your presence in the world. You see the wounded and the broken and say, these are my brothers and sisters. Lord, Lord inspire us with your love, challenge us with your truth, empower us with your strength to live for life in the midst of death. Amen. Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Gracious and merciful God who has caused his wondrous works to be remembered, equip us to be people in whom the Spirit of God dwell, who would count anything as insignificant in order to gain Christ and found in him, that we may know Christ and the power of his resurrection sharing in his suffering and becoming like him in his death through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God now and forevermore. Amen. grace of God of enfold you, love of Christ uphold you, and the spirit of truth set you free. Go forward in faith. Let us depart in peace.